It's Tozer. <sighs> and it's coffee. When it's not excessive heat and I get the chance to sit out here and read my devotionals and look around, <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> really. Because I have a wide variety of plants that the majority of them were bought in a 99 cent store. <laughs> and now <laughs> they've grown. They're huge. And I thank God that He has allowed me to not choose to be blessed, as some are prosperously, but to appreciate the little things that Him and I have enjoyed all my life as a Christian, which is to be able to see those places and things that He can provide, irregardless of cost or price or what we in America like to do is, you know, collect our little tokens and games and toys that we play with, but that I've always been able to find a alternative way, that God has always made an, an unusual circumstance where, whereby he provides anyways. I think of the one story about when Jesus was walking with his disciples and they came up to a tax collector and they owed a coin, probably a coin of the realm of the Roman Empire. And so Jesus tells his disciples to go out and catch a fish, and who knows how long that took. <laughs> but they caught the fish and brought it in, and inside the fish was a coin, and they paid their tax. That's pretty weird. <laughs> I think of my life as being a lot like that. God has always provided, whether in prosperity or whether in poverty. He's always been an unusual way of showing me how I can enjoy simple things that he's given me. Like these plants that have grown up. Do not laugh at something God takes seriously. Their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. Romans 2.15 One way the devil has of getting rid of things is to make jokes about them. And one of the sick jokes you hear is that the conscience is that part of you which makes you sorry when you get caught. There are some things that are not the proper objects of humor, and one of them is conscience. That power of conscience that God has set in the human breast can suddenly isolate a soul and hang it between heaven and hell as lonely as if God had never created but one soul, and that's not a joking matter. Remember, the conscience is always on God's side, always on God's side. It judges conduct in the light of the moral law, and as scripture says, excuses or accuses. The light that alighted every man that comes into the world is not a joking matter. The eternal, universal presence of the luminous Christ is not a joking matter. Jokes about politics, if you must joke, they are usually funny anyway. But don't joke about God, and don't joke about conscience, nor death, nor life, nor love, nor the cross, nor prayer. There is legitimate humor in our lives, and I think it is in us by the gift of God. Your sense of humor does not have to dry up and die, there's plenty to laugh at in the world. But be sure you don't laugh at something that God takes seriously. Conscience is one of those things. It's interesting is that I'm not quite sure where Tozer was going with that, but I know that in my world, and possibly yours, you have seen how it is easily acceptable now to laugh at and to participate in things that we know are not edifying or not positive and tear people down and I think that sometimes we program ourselves to accept the things that the world sees as funny that maybe we should be considering as being a little more tender like the misfortune of someone 
when they fall, the scriptures teach us to not laugh at them for their failures, but to consider ourselves lest we fall also into the same temptation or the same situation. In my mind, my conscience is the first warning sign that I'm doing something wrong and I need to make it tender and always provocable by God to cause me to go, you know, I don't think it's a good idea. And to respond to that and then take it to the Lord in prayer because I think that too often we don't listen to either our friends, our neighbors, our mind in thinking about what we've done or how we've reacted or how we've provoked someone. But we excuse ourselves too easily by saying, oh, it's not that big a deal. Oh, you know, they'll get over it. Oh, you know, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, they took it wrong. But isn't that just offering an excuse for our own sinfulness, really? Our own ability to try to hide the fact that we cause them that feeling? That's what our conscience does. It reminds us that God is watching and God knows the intents of our heart. And while we may think that we can excuse ourselves because we're very good at making up excuses for why we do things, He knows better and gave us this gift of our conscience to be able to stop us from continuing in sin and to maybe think twice the next time we laugh at someone or treat someone with disrespect and not consider someone's feelings that might be involved in what we take for granted that we can get away with that God might not see as being quite so humorous or able to be put under the label of grace and liberty and freedom or grace and lawfulness I should say because all things are lawful to me but not all things are expedient and those things that hurt another believer or trip them up are not the best things that I could be doing with my time or my energy so in devotionals and devotionals if God is provoking your conscience in something that you just you know you look at your taxes and you go you know I could write this off or you know it, it just doesn't feel right that's your conscience if you're you know, looking at something and you you think it's funny, but it's one of those, you know, like, you know, kind of questionable jokes, you know, at the office or you just, you know, you gave in and you just wanted to be one of the group. You know, that's your conscience. Try to yield to that and recognize that your conscience is also the first line of defense of God speaking to you in a way that you don't understand yet. Because when you can't hear his voice, he will use your conscience to address you personally. And that's a very intimate place to be. Because the old expression used to be, let your conscience be your guide. And in those days, when there was wisdom amongst Christians, amongst family, amongst those who knew that God would hold us accountable, then our conscience reminded us that one day we would face a judge and so let your conscience do be your guide in the sense that take it back from what you think you shouldn't do to where you should go with it which is to ask the Lord your God what am I feeling Lord what am I doing that doesn't seem quite right and you know what he'll show you <laughs> Do you really want to know?